Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today. We're going to be talking about WrestleMania 35. As of right now, we are one week away from sitting on that couch watching WrestleMania. Uh, we have the go-home shows of Monday Night Raw as well as SmackDown. We already have 13 matches, I believe, named for the card. Um, the talk is that the uh, WrestleMania show itself is going to last seven hours. Uh, can you imagine even if you are going to New York, you're probably going to want to get to the show a little bit early. You're probably going to be in MetLife Stadium for at least 10 hours that day. You're going to be there longer than I'm going to be working. Um, basically, this to me... Straight up feels like it's going to be a work day. Sitting on the couch, I'm probably going to need a nap, no joke, uh, to get me through this show. Um, it has some ups. It definitely has some downs. I can tell you off the top of my head, I'm really looking forward to the three-way between Ronda Rousey, Charlotte Flair, and Becky Lynch. I'm looking forward to Triple H versus Batista. I think that Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar has a chance to be a really fun match. And almost everything else that's on the show itself just seems like could go 50-50 all, all along the way. It really could go either way. Um, as of right now, they haven't really planned out what's going to be on the actual WrestleMania show, what's going to be on uh, the pre-show. When it all really comes down to it, the only thing that's really going to separate it is the fact that if, if it's the show is on the pre-show... It honestly might get a little bit more time. It might get left off of the WrestleMania DVD or the Blu-ray release. Um, you can remember back there was a lot of talk about the reason why Austin Aries asked to leave the company is he did not get the bonus um, that he was hoping to get by his WrestleMania match was cut off of the WrestleMania release um, that was up for sale. Um, I don't really know many people that are actually buying uh, WrestleMania Blu-rays or WrestleMania DVDs with uh, you know everything up on the network. WWE isn't even really releasing that many DVDs uh, anymore because I think the network basically killed it. You go back to uh, you know 2012, we were making videos like crazy. I, I remember saying that like they'll always have room to release those you know documentary sets with the uh, two discs of matches. They don't really even do that anymore. Almost everything that gets released these days are like those three disc sets of just randomness matches. Best of SmackDown, best of Raw, best of NXT, best of the pay-per-views. Um, other than that and the, and, the, and the actual pay-per-views that come out every month. I mean, when was the last time you got a really good like Andre the Giant set? Or, you know, they keep on you know putting out like the last one I can remember is the Macho Man uh, three disc unreleased set of matches that you've never seen before, aka you've never seen them honestly more than likely for a reason. Um, so, you know, the DVD sets have just basically gone out the window and died. Um, you look at this, you've got a lot of the stuff you basically see on a lot of the WrestleManias. You've got the Women's Battle Royal. You know, of course, last year that was going to be the Fabulous Mula, uh Rumble, and then of course everybody came out and, you know, bitched and moaned about the things that Fabulous Mula was sort of uh, doing during her lifespan and WWE chickened out and you know pulled it because they didn't want to lose the Snickers money um, for having some sort of bad name linked along with the show. Um, the, the Women's Battle Royal will probably be pre-show city um, of course with the uh, Women's Championship match um, you know taking the main spot of the show. I don't think many people are going to complain that there's only one women's match that's going to be on the actual WrestleMania show. If you go back to last year, I believe the women had four matches. They had the Battle Royal. Uh, they had the uh, Charlotte versus Asuka. They had Ronda Rousey and Stephanie involved in a mixed tag. And, of course, they had um, the SmackDown. Did they, didn't they they have, like, six girls in the match last year? Um, Charlotte... Uh, I think Becky was involved in the pre-show match, but they, they, they had a match out there. I think even, uh, that was in Orlando. I, I'm not 100% sure, but I know that they had a lot of matches, so I don't think many people are going to complain about the Women's Battle Royal being on there. Alexa Bliss is going to be the host of the show. Hopefully this you know turns into something. It's not just her adding herself to the, uh, the Women's Battle Royal. I don't think that she's going to be able to add herself, even though she is a multi-time champion. 
uh, to the championship match. I think most people are just going to want to see Charlotte, Becky Lynch, and Ronda Rousey bail it out. But, um, you know, she's been doing a lot of stuff with the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, uh, trying to get Braun Strowman and the two dudes from Saturday Night Live uh, to get along. Maybe this could just be Alexa Bliss sort of turning into the manager of Braun Strowman. Maybe Braun actually has a full-on heel turn, and they can get some momentum uh, behind this guy and actually carry it through all the way into next year's WrestleMania. He seems to be a lot of guy that, you know, has fans. I don't want to call him a fan favorite, but uh, has a reason that he should be involved in a big match at WrestleMania because it seems like every year at WrestleMania time, he just dies out of steam. Uh, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Uh, it seems that Braun Strowman has to be the full-on favorite to win this match because other than him and the two dudes uh, from uh, Saturday Night Live, I don't think they really have a list of competitors other than like the guys you know that's going to be involved in it, like Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder, or Apollo Crews, um, the guys that you can just sort of pick out of the thin air that you know... Um, aren't going to be there, but uh, if they do have a name, when it comes time to talk about the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, uh, we'll go over it. Uh, they've already done the thing with the surprise call-up when Baron Corbin won at 32, so I'm not looking really looking for anybody from, from NXT to win it. Um, last year, of course, Matt Hardy, who was sort of that like upper mid-card uh, that never really got the jump out of it. Um, somebody like that could surprise us, so uh, we'll see what goes on with the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Um, Bobby Lashley versus Finn Balor. Even though Finn Balor is one of my favorite guys in pro wrestling right now, I'm honestly not looking for a lot uh, to come uh, from Finn versus Bobby Lashley. We've honestly seen that match possibly a thousand times on Monday Night Raw already to get us here. So for it to be on the WrestleMania stage, even though there's rumors of the Demon showing up, doesn't really mean anything to me. Uh, Buddy Murphy against Tony Nese. I, I don't really even know what to say uh, from this um, because of the fact that I'm not a, real, uh, not a 205 live watcher. I don't even watch the highlights, uh, to be honest. Angle versus Baron Corbin. All of the uh, basically things on the internet, like the smart fans like to read um, from listening to Wrestling Observer and things like that. It seems like this is not the match that John Cena is going to be involved in. So... The match we're actually going to get is possibly going to be Angle versus Baron Corbin. No matter how much we hope that this match doesn't happen, it's going to happen. And um, we're actually going to see Kurt Angle versus Baron Corbin. So Angle possibly has to get the win here unless, you know, that sort of Monday Night Raw, uh, you know, I was going to make the joke and call them the, uh, I forgot name of that group from WCW uh, around 95-96 um, but it'll be like the group of like Baron Corbin uh, uh, you've got uh, well I guess Bobby Lashley already has a match but you know that group of guys on Raw that just always seems to stick together and uh, you know you know, be those bad heels maybe they all turn on Angle but I, I, I hope that Angle if he had a better competitor, like if it was Kurt Angle against Rey Mysterio or Kurt Angle against John Cena, Kurt Angle against, uh, you know, basically almost anybody else, I think that Angle would go out on top by losing the match and looking better. But I don't think anybody is going to give Kurt Angle any sympathy if he goes out there and loses to Baron Corbin on the WrestleMania stage. Um, uh, Samoa Joe is going to be going up against Rey Mysterio for the United States Championship match. Because of the fact that this match basically was just pulled out of the middle of thin air, I'm not really excited for it, but it possibly could be a match that, you know, could jump up and be like, hey, this is actually honestly pretty good. Same thing goes for AJ Styles against Randy Orton. Um, could be sneaky good. Um, we've got the women's. Uh, tag teams, uh, which is going to be Bailey and Sasha, Beth Phoenix and Natalia, the Iconics, Nia Jax and Tamina, even though this is a new championship. To me, this honestly has pre-show written all over it, and it is another women's match that I didn't think about, so maybe they actually are going to have four women's matches on the show. Um, Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. I know that Roman uh, sort of was a surprise to come back to WWE when his uh, cancer went into remission. 
Um, but to me, honestly, this match... I, I know they give it some build-up. I mean, McIntyre's beaten the hell out of every member of the Shield. He's laid out Roman Reigns. He's beat Dean Ambrose twice. He beat Roman Reigns. I'm sorry, he beat uh, Seth Rollins once. Um, so, you know, Drew's looking pretty strong here. But is there a doubt in the mind that Roman's going to win this match, guys? I, I, I really don't think so. Uh, Shane versus The Miz is getting pretty high billing here. It's a Falls Count Anywhere match. To me, I know that they had the build-up with Shane and The Miz winning the tag titles and not being able to win him back before Shane jumped him. But to me, honestly, this isn't a match that is worthy of a Falls Count Anywhere match other than the fact that this is Shane McMahon wrestling at WrestleMania um, and he's going to do something crazy stupid where he's possibly going to leave concussed. Uh, WrestleMania 32, he jumped off the top of the cell. WrestleMania 33, people actually were seeing the picture that they were putting an actual ring above the ring and thought Shane was going to jump from even higher, uh, jumping from the actual, I guess you can say, like, uh, shade cover for the ring that, that was supposed to block it in case it rained or anything like that. Um, I, I don't know what Shane's going to do. I know that, you know, uh, they have a huge playground to play with in that huge stadium. This could be something that leads backstage. It could actually lead them you know, fighting outside of the actual arena itself uh, if the match has some time. So uh, I, I don't really know what to think of this. But I don't, I don't know. The McMahons, just like Triple H, they don't win these matches at WrestleMania or in the other pay-per-views that much. Shane possibly, I think, is going to be doing the job. The Miz is a new babyface. I don't know um, what The Miz really gets out of winning this match other than, you know, becoming that babyface that goes on and wins the Intercontinental Championship and the United States title. And then all of a sudden people are like, The Miz is going to be a great champion. He's going to bring some credibility to the mid-card. And, and then it, it, it never really happens because... They don't, they don't put any steam behind those belts. <laughs> but uh, So we'll see what goes on with that one. Triple H versus Batista is kind of, in my mind, my main event, the match that I care the most about um, going into WrestleMania. I want to see these guys beat the hell out of each other. It's going to be really fun. Um, I really think that Triple H is going to win that match. Um, from there, we go to Brock versus uh, Seth Rollins. Um, everything on the internet basically says that Rollins is going to win this match, but with WrestleMania 30, um, with, uh, I guess that was last year, so that'd be WrestleMania 34, never count Brock out. No matter what those rumors say about Brock is leaving to go to go fight for UFC, until the fact that, you know, he taps out or his shoulders are on the mat for three seconds, I will never believe that Brock doesn't have a chance to win at WrestleMania. So I think that Rollins is the favorite, but I wouldn't be surprised um, if, if, if Brock won that. Um, you know, Kofi Kingston finally going to be getting his chance to go after the championship. Um, they made this guy jump through a thousand hoops. Um, I got Kofi winning, but wouldn't really be surprised if he loses. So we'll have to see really what goes down with that one. And of course, the big main event. Rousey, Becky, Charlotte, um, they, have, they haven't really came out with a plan of what they're doing with those championships, but as of right now, I think that Becky's winning, Charlotte might walk away and she gets to keep her belt, Becky goes to Raw, Charlotte stays on SmackDown, um, some people think that they're going to unify those belts, uh, we'll see uh, what happens, I think that's something that we're going to have to wait and see what happens on, on Monday or Tuesday, Maybe update the video and see where we go from there. So that's WrestleMania. There's possibly a John Cena match too, even though we don't really know. Maybe he just comes out and tax Elias and that just, they just call it a day. But this is it. What do you guys think? I think I'm taking a nap. Hopefully I don't miss a good match. Peace out, guys. Hey, what is up, everybody? This is Steve Breach coming to you here today. Um, yesterday on WWE's edition of Monday Night Raw, it was announced that Alexa Bliss... Uh, was named as the WrestleMania host for WrestleMania 35. Uh, it's going to be coming to you live from New York City, which makes everybody mad because it's actually coming to you from New Jersey. Honestly, what's it matter? I mean, it, 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 it doesn't matter in the long run. Um, Alexa Bliss is, is going to be, you know, the host of WrestleMania. I think that honestly, they, this is a gimmick they've been using for the past few years. 
Um, you know, nobody did it better than The Rock at WrestleMania 27. Of course, you know, he was able to, you know, put himself into the ending of WrestleMania, uh, coming out when The Miz uh, and John Cena ended in a double countout and basically came out and restarted the match um, that fueled the fire um, for Rock versus Cena for WrestleMania 28, which was, I, I guess, one of the biggest WrestleManias of all time uh, and I don't really know where it stands but to me honestly it, it's probably one of the most I've ever got the most hyped for um, coming up with the whole rock versus Cena you know you know it, it might have been babyface versus babyface but I think the wrestling world was torn um, for who they were gonna cheer for um, at, at that year's WrestleMania um, at WrestleMania uh, 30 th th three. Um, in Orlando, they had the New Day um, as the uh, the guest host. That was sort of like a cover uh, for them bringing the Hardys in. Everybody thought that the New Day was adding themselves into that tag team uh, ladder match. And when it all came down to it, it ended up being the Hardys um, who were there making their return to WWE. At the time, they were coming from Ring of Honor. Um, but they had just ended up with uh, TNA Impact about a month later. And uh, everybody knew they were coming. It was just a matter of when they were coming. Uh, they cashed in basically at the right time. They came down. They won the titles, and it, it was. I think when they uploaded it to YouTube, it was one of WWE's most watched um, videos that they'd ever uploaded onto their YouTube channel. It was. It was um, a pretty big deal um, for the Hardys to come back to WWE. Everybody loves uh, Matt and Jeff. Um, it's just a matter of you know why WWE wants Alexa Bliss to be in this role. Um, when it comes down to it, uh, Bliss, you know, she's she's doing something right now. A lot of people think that she's injured. You know, she came off at that time where she suffered, you know, a lot of concussions in a short period of time, and WWE sort of put her on the shelf. Um, I think she came back at the Royal Rumble um, this year, and now here she is, you know, just a month later, and she's posting, you know, videos and pictures of her being at home and not being on the road um, with WWE superstars. She's hosting, you know, her own little sort of talk show. Um, there's a few different ways that this could go. We know that Alexa Bliss is not going to be a part of anything on the Monday Night Raw brand. Um, well, then again, you know, Ronda Rousey, who's the Monday Night Raw women's champion, she's fighting against two members of the SmackDown brand. So I think we're getting to the place where the brand's really aren't going to mean anything to WWE anymore. Uh, we had Shelton Benjamin just show up on Monday Night Raw to take on Seth Rollins on Monday. Um, so we don't know what's going to be going on with SmackDown's championship. You know, Lana put out a challenge to Asuka. Other than that, you know, they're going to have to sort of figure something out on SmackDown sooner than later. But Maybe, you know, Alexa Bliss, they wanted her to be a part of something at WrestleMania. She could be hosting a uh, some sort of a talk show um, where she brings out a guest um, that might mean something to WrestleMania. Um, or maybe it's just a guest that ends up just being a celebrity to think that, you know, somebody's going to get some buzz um, and then just order the network to, to re-watch uh, WrestleMania once the word gets out that they were there. Maybe Alexa Bliss is just going to add herself to that SmackDown um, championship match, and they're just going to just make it where the guest host has, um, you know, the, the final ruling uh, of where she's going to be, and basically like she's a member of the uh, the authority uh, with the McMahon, so um, I, I don't think in the grand scheme of things this is going to mean anything to WrestleMania 35, I think when we look back, um, you know, we watch the DVD, or we watch this on the network, whatever you do, when was the last time I bought a, I don't have... I've got 30, I've got 31, I've got 32. That must have been the last one. I don't think I have WrestleMania 33 uh, on uh, DVD. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but I guess that was where my collection ended. But um, you know, I, I think when we look back, I, I don't think Alexa Bliss is going to mean anything to the grand scheme of WrestleMania. But uh, you never know. This could be something big. Uh, where she ends up winning the championship or she could just be hosting some sort of uh, talk show with some sort of Joe Schmo. Um, it doesn't really mean anything. 
Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Reach coming to you here today. We're going to be talking about more than likely what's going to be happening on the WWE pre-show to WrestleMania 35. That is going to be the Women's Battle Royal. Um, I, I thought last year this match sort of got named like Miss WrestleMania or maybe I was thinking about WrestleMania 25. Um, but as of right now, this match was kind of named because... Uh, the women's championship changed hands on SmackDown. Asuka lost her title, um, and that sort of you know threw everything up in the air. It looked like they were going to be doing something um, with uh, uh, Asuka going up against members of Absolution. I really thought that they were maybe even going to do this as a three-way, even though that sort of would have taken um, some stuff away um, from... Uh, the, the three-way going on with the championship. It, you know, WrestleMania is so far away. If they would have put it on the pre-show, possibly by the time the other one came, it wouldn't really have taken anything away. Um, but uh, as of right now, you know, Asuka uh, diminished to the pre-show. She sort of has to be the favorite uh, to win this match. I don't think really winning um, a, a pre-show battle royal um, gives you any, you know, pat on the back for, you know, carrying the championship and being a good champion on SmackDown before just dropping the championship to Charlotte to build more uh, steam towards that main event uh, really does anything. But uh, as of right now, you've got Asuka, you've got Carmella, Naomi, Lana, Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, Nikki Cross, Dana Brooke, Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan, Sarah Logan, Mickey James, and Selena Vega. Selena... Is somebody they, they they throw in a lot of these battle royals slash royal rumbles. She's not really somebody that they build up um, as to be a real competitor. She's sort of just uh, they don't call her the manager. Is she like the financial advisor or something like that to, to see him all in this. And uh, you know she can really go, but they don't really like using her in those spots. So I, I think that we got to count her out. Um, you know Mickey James is somebody that I think would be good to sort of give this too because of the fact she she's honestly probably got to be closer to being done with her career than, than keep going um Liv Morgan Sarah Logan and Ruby Riot um they're pretty strong as a trio I don't really see them you know breaking that group up so I don't see them doing anything with them winning that one Dana Brooke um they're rebuilding her I, I, they sort of fed her to the wolves uh, with Ronda Rousey for two weeks, giving her a short little program on Monday Night Raw. Um, maybe they could sort of build her up even stronger by having her win this. Um, Nikki Cross, I thought somebody was coming to in it, from NXT to the main roster. Um, she, she's been built up to, to be somebody who could be somebody, but she just keeps losing, honestly. So I, I think that it, it might be too soon for her. Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, I wouldn't be surprised to see them have a strong showing, but maybe even le lead to them sort of, you know, teasing that breakup that, that they've been doing even more uh, stronger by them losing this. Uh, Naomi won last year, so I don't think she's going to be doing it. Carmella, sort of honestly, since losing the championship, um, has, has really gone to Jokesville and just really hasn't been that strong. Um, so honestly, Asuka, I think, is the strongest competitor to win um, the, 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 I was going to call it Miss WrestleMania again, but it's just the, the Women's Battle Royal. It's got no name, got no sponsor, got nothing, but hey, I'm going to throw this at you right now. Don't laugh. Sneaky, sneaky. Number two pick, Lana. Doubt me. Try me if you will, but tell me that's not going to be a good storyline. For Total Divas when it comes back, Lana winning the WrestleMania Battle Royal. Hey, what is up everybody? This is Secret Beach coming to you here. I found a list of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal competitors for WrestleMania 35. When it comes to making the WrestleMania uh, videos, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal is, is honestly one of my favorite videos to make because of the fact that you... You just get to sort of go through the list of competitors and every once in a while pull up a name like No Way Jose and just say for, hey, I really like No Way Jose. Um, I, I kind of don't like his new look, but uh, he is one of those guys that when he comes out on Monday Night Raw, that entrance, you know, makes me smile and sort of gets me into a groove. And, you know, they don't do a lot of things with audience participation, which was one of my favorite things about the Attitude Era, that I think that if they found a way to bring those things back, 
just like, you know, add something to the entrances to the competitors, sort of like um, with the New Age Outlaws, with you chant out, oh, you didn't know? Or if, you know, you uh, chant along, uh, what does everybody want when Al Snow comes out? Those are the kind of things that I think are really easy that, you know, you brings the audience into the show and makes them think they're actually a part of it. I know that WWE honestly hates those fans that think that they become part of the show um, by being there. But when you bring the whole audience into there, it, it sort of makes everybody feel, even if you're in the front row or you're sitting in the 300s, that, you know, you're part of the show and you're there for a reason. You could be sitting at, at home on your couch watching, but you wanted to be there because you wanted to feel those moments. And I think that, you know, No Way Jose, I think, is one of those guys that gets me into the mood to, to watch him wrestle, no matter how stupid it is. And I, I think I can only think of one, him winning one match that I've seen uh, since coming to the main roster. Um, but, you know, we're going to look at this. I think that, honestly, coming in, Braun Strowman has to be the huge... Um, Odds on favorite to win this match. Um, you've got Colin Yost and you've got uh, Michael Che from Saturday Night Live who host the weekend updates. Um, I, I don't think that they're going to be using Saturday Night Live other than possibly the night before um, the event to uh, uh, really um, publicize WrestleMania. So I don't think them showing up on the weekend updates set the next week. Um, you know, hyping up what WrestleMania 35 was. I bet they don't even talk about it yet once again. So I don't see them as the guys that's going to win it. Uh, when it comes to Braun Strowman, uh, I, I think they might be doing something um, with uh, uh, the, the WrestleMania host. I think that um, Alexa Bliss, um, you know, they sort of tried to use her as a negotiator uh, to try and... Um, you know, calm down the tensions because she wanted, uh, you know, her, you know, celebrities from WrestleMania to sort of, you know, slide in together and, and, and you know, act as one. And, and they didn't want them, you know, in a bad place where they felt scared to be there. Uh, so they tried to have some sort of a reconciliation, which did not work. Um, Alexa Bliss has been getting her talk show um, on Monday Night Raw. She has been wrestling on house shows, but they haven't been having her actually wrestle on television for some reason, and some people think that they're actually just trying to build her up as a character. Um, a lot like, you know, you know, she wrestled in NXT, and then when she became a manager to Blake and Murphy is when she really got on the rise. She started to wrestle again. She didn't really get that big of a build, but then once she hit the main roster, she took off like crazy. So I think they're just trying to sort of develop that character a little bit more, uh, maybe add a little bit to it because it seems like she's done everything there is to do as a heel um, by winning the SmackDown Championship countless times, winning the Raw Championship countless times, um, that they can really go up from there. So um, that, that is one direction they could be going. We look at this list, Andre Siam Olmos. I don't see him as the guy who's going to win the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, but I would put many a money on him is to be a guy that is not going to be in this match come next year. I really thought that, you know, after the uh, Superstar call-ups, when they did the Superstar shake-up, I thought that he was going to be in the main event by SummerSlam. And, you know, he did have some good matches against guys like AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan, uh, Rey Mysterio. He hasn't really caught fire yet, but it, it's got to be coming sooner than later. Apollo Crews is somebody I always root for, but, you know, he did have a really good match. Um, against Kurt Angle, as well as he was one of the guys that came out and helped Braun Strowman at TLC. Doesn't look like right now is going to be his time, though. Titus O'Neil, Tyler Breeze, Jinder Mahal, No Way Jose are all jokes. Bobby Roode and Chad Gable coming off of the um, tag titles that they've held, I believe, twice. Um, I don't see them as guys that are actually going to win this match as well. Um, Gable... The sooner they figure out that they could use this guy as a single, the, the more stock he's going to have in WWE. Um, Kalisto, Grand Malik, Lynn Storato, Bo Dallas, Kurt, I didn't even know the B team was still around. I, I can't even remember. I thought that maybe Bo Dallas or Kurt Axel coming down with an injury. Um, you can remember them winning the Raw tag team titles out of the middle of nowhere. Um, and they had a little bit of a run, but I, I don't even know if they're on TV anymore. Um, Heath Slater and Rhino, the team that will never go away. Um, Victor and Connor, they, they seem like they're going to do something with those guys in the tag teams and they just they, they, they like get scared and pull up. Um, 
Ali is somebody that people are thinking could be a favorite to win this match because of the fact he was sort of scheduled uh, to uh, be in the Elimination Chamber and sort of his injury, which led to the rise of Kofi Kingston, um, you know, sort of he, he hasn't really been able to accomplish that push that he was getting before then. Um, I, I just don't really see Ali as somebody who's going to eliminate somebody um, from uh, the Battle Royal, even as, as the last guy. Um, so that's why I wouldn't pick him. I, he, I, there's 205 Live guys, even though he's not there anymore. I, I don't see them winning Battle Royals. Uh, Gallows and Anderson on their way to um, AEW. They're not going to be winning this. Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy. Kind of a surprise they couldn't find some somewhere to put these guys in some sort of a tag match. Um, they're, they're some of those popular guys. And they're going to be battling out. Well, at least with the Saturday Night Live angle, it might not be on the pre-show. But I don't think it's guaranteed. Otis and Tucker. I've never seen these guys wrestle a match. Even though they show up on Monday Night Raw once in a while. And I think Otis is the one that is uh, really over with a lot of people. And then EC3 can't get a win on main event. Not going to get a win at WrestleMania. So that's your Andre the Giant Memorial uh, Battle Royal list. I don't think there's anybody as strong as Braun Strowman that could be pulling this out with a victory, guys. All right. Intercontinental Championship is going to be on the line between Bobby Lashley and Finn Balor at WrestleMania 35. In my opinion, I feel that this is a match we've already seen about a thousand times on Monday Night Raw. The only thing that's going to make this match a little bit different is there's lots of rumors that Finn Balor is going to be bringing the Demon um, to WrestleMania. Um, that, you know, even though we haven't seen the Demon since the AJ Styles match, I believe, at TLC well over a year ago, I, I don't really know what the feud with Bobby Lashley does by bringing the Demon out to, to um, be this. You know, Bobby Lashley is a big dude. He always has sort of Lilo ru uh, Rush uh, in his back pocket, you know, sort of um, cheating and, and finding a way to take Finn Balor out of the match. And that seems to be the one thing. I think that Finn Balor not wrestling as a demon, finding a way to outsmart Rush and Lashley would have been much better um, for his competitor, uh, for his uh, character uh, moving forward. I I'm not looking for a lot from this match. Uh, this is one of the matches that possibly could even be on the pre-show. The demon could even be the one thing keeping it um, from the pre-show. So I am really surprised um, that this is all the build um, that this match really got. Um, Balor is one of the reasons why I continue to watch wrestling. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't, the, the, I don't think the Demons ever lost a match in NXT or uh, in WWE. You know, because when he lost the NXT Championship, he wasn't the Demon. It was just a regular house show against Samoa Joe. And I don't think he dressed up as a Demon in that cage match that he had in Australia against Joe before he left. I think mean, he was just Finn Balor. So as far as I can think, the Demons never lost a match in WWE, so I wouldn't be surprised. You know, the Demons not showing up at WrestleMania and losing to freaking Bobby Lashley. In my opinion, one of the most boring guys on the entire roster. So I don't really got a lot to say about this match, so I'm just picking Finn Balor to get the win. And we'll see what we go from there. Kurt Angle. Versus Baron Corbin and Kurt Angle's WWE retirement match. Um, I know last week in the video I made about this, I pretty much bashed it, basically saying that Baron Corbin was almost you know the worst name that WWE could have came uh, with. But you know, you know, Angle wrestled a lot of matches on his way out. He wrestled on Raw and on SmackDown. He wrestled matches against Rey Mysterio, AJ Styles, um, Apollo Crews. Um, we've got just about every, I guess you can say, Kurt Angle dream match. Even though the uh, Styles versus Angle match was uh, busted up by uh, Randy Orton, I think that's almost what everybody was expecting, especially with the fact that Kurt Angle is going to be wrestling twice a week um, on, on his way to his last match. I know that you know the last match is the last match, but he's got to leave something in the tank um, for him to get there. But uh, you know, the, the the dream matches that I was sort of pulling out of my hat for Angle to have at WrestleMania with him, Samoa Joe, Sting, AJ Styles, you know, sort of pulling off of those uh, TNA rivalries um, that he had, maybe even John Cena 
Um, one of the last rivalries that he had in WWE before leaving. You know, I, I guess you can say Kurt Angle's run um, in the company since coming back. Baron Corbin really is his biggest rival um, since, you know, Corbin is the guy who took his Monday Night Raw uh, GM spot away before, you know, the authority came in to, to fix wrestling back in December, took it away from Baron Corbin. Um, and, you know, Kurt Angle just sort of became an active wrestler on the roster, which was honestly kind of weird. Um, you know, Angle's run with him wrestling, I think every match that he's had, um, I don't know how to say this, like, I'll just, I'll just come out and say it, and if it's not the way it was, I apologize, but, you know, every match Angle's had in WWE, the bar honestly has been lowered. I think we're at the perfect time for Kurt Angle to be calling it a career. He, he I think that he would be a great character um, in WWE if they really do need sort of a GM or somebody to pop up here and there along the way um, and do something. But if it, this is a real retirement and he is leaving WWE to go home, I wouldn't be surprised to see, you know, big money sort of thrown at him to wrestle independence. And I'm not going to be a guy to sort of hate on him for going out there and doing it. So, um, lots of talk are surrounding this match was that, you know, John Cena would show up and sort of beat up Baron Corbin. Cena and Corbin, you know, have been going back and forth on Twitter, which does not, you know, put out uh, the flames on that fire. But, uh, you know, the big names that follow wrestling and, and are our words of what's going on behind the scenes um, swear to us that there is no ties between Kurt Angle and John Cena at WrestleMania. I think that just Cena is jealous that he didn't get this spot. And whatever Cena is going to be doing, that's going to be one of the biggest mysteries in this next week leading into WrestleMania 35. I'm just hoping... It's not going to be something involving that concert with Elias. Um, you know, Elias called up The Rock for a long damn time, and nobody showed. So I'm hoping that's not the direction they're going. But um, Kurt Angle, um, if he would have wrestled any other guy, if he would have wrestled you know, the list of guys, Sting, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, um, John Cena, I thought that it would be better for him to actually lose his retirement match. And I thought that would be a way for... The fans that really get that one last sort of applause in for him as, you know, the, the winner got their exit and, they, you know, they, they gave Angle the, the full-on walkout um, to, to end his career as he, he waved everybody and he didn't get the you suck um, sort of chant. He just, you know, had people cheering along with him. Um, but I, I don't know. Wrestling against Baron Corbin, Kurt Angle better freaking win. That's all I got to say, guys. So WrestleMania 35, we got Angle. Tip of the hat of the great career, and you better win this one. Hey, what is up, everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today. We're going to pick up where we left off yesterday with the WrestleMania 35 coverage. Uh, this video is going to be covering the Shane McMahon versus The Miz uh, in the Falls Count Anywhere match. This, of course, is coming off of the breakup of, uh, I'm not sure if they were called, like, the world's greatest tag team or the uh, best in the world, or, or what it was. But then, of course, this angle started months ago. Months ago! Uh, when Shane McMahon stepped in for The Miz, winning the best in the world at the uh, Saudi Arabia show, which I can honestly admit that, that I just didn't watch, because I had really no uh, thought of, of care about it. The Australia show I watched... Wasn't that great? The world's greatest Royal Rumble. Didn't really feel like I really missed anything other than that uh, cage match between Brock and uh, Roman. And uh, just came home from work, saw the uh, the spoilers that were up. Well, I guess they weren't really spoilers. The events already happened. But uh, didn't really feel like there was anything that was out there. And, of course, that's when uh, the world was going crazy, that Shane was going to be turning heel, uh, sort of becoming the main authority figure of SmackDown, uh, and he was going to be basically just waving that trophy around uh, in everybody's face. And um, none of that really happened. It even really took months for the Shane and Miz tag team uh, to come together for them to win the tag titles. I think they they, they they won the title, and in their first defense on a pay-per-view, they lost it. Uh, then trying to go back and win it from the Usos, uh, basically 
Shane turned on The Miz. I never really understood the storyline that was going along with that. The Miz was making it seem like winning that WWE Tag Team title was going to make his dad proud of him. And he needed that tag title to be able to define himself as a wrestler. Honestly, The Miz is the guy who won money in the bank. Cashed in money in the bank and won the WWE Championship. Um, from there, he kept that title all the way until WrestleMania 27, where he main evented WrestleMania against John Cena. Even though you know everybody really knows that WrestleMania 27 was all a big buildup to The Rock versus John Cena at WrestleMania 28, The Miz won that match. The Miz beat John Cena in the main event of WrestleMania 27, keeping the WWE Championship. And for some reason, The Miz teaming with Shane McMahon on, on a borderline who cares pay-per-view is the match that's going to make The Miz's dad proud of him. It, it really made no sense to me. So Shane finally turns on The Miz, uh, basically you know throws everything on the plate of The Miz. That's the reason why they lost the titles. They weren't able to, to reunite them. Um, shove the dad in the face, jump The Miz from behind. And then all of a sudden, we just, this just boils down to a Falls Count Anywhere match. For a Falls Count Anywhere match even to happen on Monday Night Raw, let alone WrestleMania, I, I really believe that it deserves more of a buildup. This is almost like when you know they're counting down the months, and then all of a sudden they have a fresh feud, and they go right to throwing the first matchup of two guys into the Hell in the Cell. And then basically because everything that happens in WWE happens in the portions of three pay-per-views, you go from having a Hell in a Cell match to having just a normal match to having just a normal match. And when I was a kid, it was months of build-up of matches that finally led to the cage match, which that was it. It's over. It's done with. Uh, to me, honestly, having a stipulation on this... Uh, Pay-per-view, I think really the only other stipulation I can think of is the Triple H versus the Batista No Holds Barred match. Uh, a stipulation really builds something to the match that makes you really care about it. And this match, even on WWE.com on the WrestleMania site, is the fifth most important match on the show. And to me, I, I don't really see how just the breakup of a, a, t a tag team, the only thing I can think of is this is the Shane McMahon match. Uh, since Shane came back, you know, Shane wrestled against Undertaker. That was some people's main event of WrestleMania 32. Uh, he had the opening match against AJ at WrestleMania 33. Last year, what the hell did Shane do at 34? Oh, it was Shane and Brian um, against Owens um, and Sami Zayn, which was kind of you know, non-eventful. And I don't know what the original plan was, but if, if a good thing Brian came back because that was the only thing that really made uh, that match meaningful in my mind. So um, Shane, he doesn't do a lot of wrestling in WWE if it's not one of the big pay-per-views or one of the big money pay-per-views like the Saudi Arabia shows. So I don't really see um, Shane uh, doing anything other than maybe wrestling on that Saudi Arabia show. So I don't know how you continue this over. Uh, and plus, on top of that, Shane doesn't really win a lot of his matches. Uh, he just goes all out, gives you everything he's got, and leaves it there. The Miz, I can see winning this match, but then The Miz takes off from this as a babyface. And where does this guy go from here? I mean, does he, does he go after... He's on SmackDown, so he would go after the United States Championship. Maybe he goes after Samoa Joe, and we have Miz versus Joe matches, which... I like The Miz. The Miz wrestles in good matches. Joe wrestles in good matches. But I just, I don't think off the top of my head, Miz versus Joe makes good matchups in my mind. It's not a, it's not a dream match that's out there. I have been surprised before. But, um, you know, The Miz is one of those guys that I always hope for. I always dream that this guy's going to reach that next level. And it's like every single time he wins one of those mid-card titles, it is what it is. The guy's a better heel than he is a babyface. But... You watch that reality show with him and Maurice on the USA Network, which is going to be debuting on the, the Tuesday after um, WrestleMania, after SmackDown. The guy's the biggest babyface in the whole world. Nicest guy you'll ever meet. Um, bend over backwards for, for almost anybody in the world. So um, 
I can see that I'm putting him in that line. So I don't really understand the Falls Count Anywhere match. Definitely Shane is going to do something borderline stupid, possibly leave WrestleMania concussed yet once again. Um, you know, I'm not saying I might hate it. I just don't know where it fits on the card. And I, I don't really see where this buildup of this match deserves Falls Count Anywhere. Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Breeze continuing with the WrestleMania 35 coverage. We're going to be talking about the Triple H versus Batista No Holds Barred match, which honestly in my mind should also have that stipulation of Triple H's career um, being on the line. Batista up the ante, um, basically saying that he wanted to be the one to end Triple H's career. And Triple H put his career on the line in order to have the No Holds Barred stipulation in the match. Um... Triple H versus Batista is a match um, that we thought we would get for years uh, for WrestleMania. Almost since WrestleMania 31, uh, we have thought Batista would return to WWE to really give us that one more match. And for people that follow Batista on Instagram and Twitter, um, we've always sort of seen Batista really feeling like he was put on the back burner by WWE, which does build in uh, to the storyline. Um, which WWE is using as of right now, of Batista having to attack Ric Flair uh, to get Triple H's attention because Batista, I guess, has been calling and asking uh, to come back, but Triple H keeps on just blowing him off. Um, Batista's using that Triple H didn't think that Batista was going to make any success in Hollywood as an actor, and you know here he is coming back. Um, he's a big-time star in the Marvel world. Other than that, I, 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 I saw Batista make a movie about, uh, like a heist movie, about robbing a, a casino. Uh, I think it was even a, a riverboat casino, if, if I remember right. Somebody else was in it, and I didn't even know Batista was in it until the movie started. I just normally like heist movies, so I flip it on. I'm not going to say that it was the best movie of all time, but it was pretty good. Uh, I, I don't really think that Batista put it over the top, although the wrestling mark in me really did pop, um, seeing that he was in there and he was playing a big role. Uh, I have never seen a James Bond movie in my life, but I believe uh, the last movie that came out, Batista played um, a henchman heel. I don't think he had any lines in the movie, and I think people even said that his part was honestly pretty small. Um, so I, I don't really know where Batista ranks uh, in, in movies. It's not like he really has blockbuster uh, summer movies popping out like The Rock, which it seems like you know he has a movie come out every winter. He has two movies come out every summer. Uh, he knows when the movies are going to release to make money. And he doesn't really make that many movies that you sort of grumble about, even though The Rock made uh, Skyscraper, which was honestly the first movie that he ever made that I saw that I kind of just shrugged my shoulders at and said, I, I guess I'm glad I saw it, but I don't think it ever really held my attention uh, to go along to it. Um, you know, Batista is probably coming back for just this one big match at WrestleMania. More than likely, we'll see him at WrestleMania 36 in Tampa going into the WWE Hall of Fame, uh, and we'll sort of glorify his career then. Um, Triple H, uh, you know, if the career wasn't on the line, I honestly think I would have picked Batista but Batista really is like that real, uh, like old school heel. He loves old school wrestling. He loves being that heel um, that basically jumps and beats up somebody from behind, and then once the babyface um, gets that advantage, he you know begs him off, like, "Oh no, no, no! I didn't mean it. Please don't do it." Um, you know, he loves the blood and he loves the you know the way wrestling used to be before that sort of uh, PG era. Um, they came in like sort of like, I don't know if you blame Linda McMahon or Mattel. Everybody's got the different people that they sort of point at. Um, that that's the reason why WWE went PG. But, um, you know, I, I could really honestly pick Batista to lose this match just because he wants to go out that way. Um, and that would be like that, that storybook ending to his career. Um, and it, 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 just like I talked about with Shane in the last video, you, you don't really see those guys in power. You don't really see Triple H. You don't really see Shane. You don't really see Vince when they have to get in there and wrestle. They're normally putting somebody over. They're not, you know, going out there and winning it. So, um, Triple H getting a win at WrestleMania. I know that people love to bag on him. Uh, people are going to say that, you know, he only brought Batista back to beat him, uh, because of the fact that Triple H never beat him in his career. 
I really think that, that honestly, when it comes down to it, um, Batista is the one saying, I want to take the loss and uh, end my career this way, and Triple H will get the win. Hey, maybe they can come up with some weird way where they both lose. And that, honestly, is going to be badass. It's going to be hard with that no holds barred um, stipulation. But if, if anybody can come up with something, I'm sure it's going to be WWE. Um, this this is my main event, guys. This is the match, honestly, that I feel that I care the most about. Um, I can tell you that I don't really care about the grind um, to, to get there. Um, I love the Batista sit-down interview. I know that he's going to be on Monday Night Raw again tonight. Um, but um, that sit-down interview from home, uh, when he really was all desta decked out and dressed in the nines, uh, and basically you know saying what was going to happen at WrestleMania and not really... Tell, uh, not really giving you an option to think anything else was going to happen, I thought was probably the best work of his career. Which is funny, if you go back to the Go Home promo before WrestleMania 26, that promo is the promo that Vince McMahon says is the worst promo that he's ever heard in his career. Um, and, and Batista is, is, is honestly kind of proud of that. <laughs> so, um, we'll see what goes down with this one, guys. I'm picking Triple H to get the win here. I'm thinking a lot of you guys are going to be doing the same, but... Like I said, this is my main event. This is the match that I care the most about, and I hope you guys do too. Hey, what is up, everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today. WrestleMania 35, definitely one of the top three matches that's going to be happening on the show is going to be your 2019 Royal Rumble winner, Seth Rollins, going up against WWE Universal Champion Brock Lesnar. Lots of years we've gone to WrestleMania with huge questions about what Brock Lesnar is going to be doing after WrestleMania. And as of right now, I, I, I've heard that Brock Lesnar is scheduled uh, to, to make an appearance, um, I believe, in October when WWE flips the television contract and uh, they're going to be appearing on Fox. I, 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 I don't know, maybe they just put out some sort of uh, press release um, about it, and that's where it is, because I don't even think they've started selling tickets to it. I think the story just came out last week that a lot of people are thinking that the show is going to be happening in the Staples Center um, in Los Angeles to sort of give it that big time of feel. Uh, they'll be running Raw and SmackDown on Monday and Tuesday, and they're even talking about the week before doing the last shows of Monday Night Raw and SmackDown before the change in Madison Square Garden, which has not happened in years where they've had a television taping for Raw or SmackDown, something that people have always really asked for. So um, Brock looks like he's going to be part of the WWE family, but with such a large gap uh, between April and October, um, you got to be wondering, you know, is Brock Lesnar going to be dipping his toe back into UFC after the UFC 200 debacle, which some people are going to say, how could it be really a debacle if Brock Lesnar got the win? Um, but Brock Lesnar was suspended um, for failing um, his pre- and post-fight drug test, which led to a lawsuit from Mark Hunt against UFC, which I think was unsuccessful in the long run. Brock ended up having to pay a fine, having to get suspended, um, but I think he got to keep almost all of his winnings um, from the show, which is, I think, was Mark Hunt was throwing a fit about, was Mark Hunt had to take the L, and uh, that goes on his win-loss record, as well as not getting the money for going into a fight with somebody that UFC knew failed his drug test. Doesn't really make a lot of sense to it, but uh, of course everybody can remember Brock Lesnar climbing into the octagon, challenging Daniel Cormier. If the UFC 200 debacle wouldn't have happened, I really think that fight already would have happened. Um, Cormier fought just, uh, you know, uh, within the last two months. Um, so I, I'm not sure if they're prepping this um, to, to, to go down right away. I know that Brock um, is off of his UFC USADA suspension as of, I believe, January. Um, so that fight could be good to go um, as soon as they want to. Some people, every time that Brock Lesnar is on Monday Night Raw, mentions the fact that it looks like Brock is actually getting smaller. Uh, maybe he is actually going into the UFC testing um, clean. And um, maybe this really is going to be his last one. But I, I, I think every time we've thought that it was a guarantee that Brock was uh, going to be losing at WrestleMania because his contract is over, we've been wrong. <laughs> WrestleMania 31, of course, he re-signed, but everybody thought that was going to be Roman walking out with the championship. Instead, 
Rollins cashed in. He became the champion and he walked out. Um, WrestleMania 32, there wasn't really talk because I think everybody knew the, the length of the deal. Um, but, of course, everybody can remember Brock was supposed to lose against Roman. And he won. Um, so, I mean, even though it looks like Seth Rollins is going to be taking that championship um, and becoming the Universal Champion yet once again, I, don't, I really don't think it's a guarantee. Uh, Rollins really is probably one of the hottest wrestlers in WWE, even though he's not really the main face of the company, and that would be Roman Reigns, who is wrestling against, um, I almost called him Drew Galloway, uh, but against Drew McIntyre. Um, that, to me, honestly, is sort of a throwaway match, and um, as of about a month ago, the one way that a lot of people thought this was going to end was with the Shield reunion. But since then, at the last pay-per-view, we had a Shield match. Um, we've really seen all three members getting beaten down uh, by Drew McIntyre, which is leading to the Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns match, which to me sort of grumbles and groans. I, I was really surprised that they didn't add Roman to this match. Um, and um, put him right back into the limelight after coming back. It, they sort of would have had to find a way to explain. Maybe Roman should have, like, maybe Rollins could have just sort of tried to give Roman the, the, the Royal Rumble victory, putting him in the match. Uh, but maybe he didn't want to accept. Brock come out and say that he'd fight both of them, and there you go, three way. Easy does it. Um, but um, a lot of people thought that they were going to get sort of a Shield reunion. But uh, I'm not really 100% sure that's going to happen. I don't even know if, if uh, Dean Ambrose, what he's going to be doing on WrestleMania. He's, he, in my opinion, he's, he's kind of too big to just have in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. But WWE's already announced that he's going to be leaving the company. I don't know if he's just sort of, I don't know, I was going to say taking a Jeff Hardy or Kurt Angle like leave. But they both left for different reasons. And it's almost like Ambrose is leaving because he doesn't like the spot that he's in. Maybe he doesn't like the money that they're offering. But they really haven't re-upped their offer to make it any better. So uh, maybe Rollins just... I mean, I'm sorry. Maybe Mac... Um, shoot. Maybe Ambrose just really wants to walk away for a little bit. And they're just going to let him have his space as long as he needs it. Hopefully that he doesn't just pop up uh, wrestling for AEW or TNA or... Um, something like that. So um, he is a big piece of the Shield, which is a big piece of WWE. Uh, as long as Rollins and Reigns is in the company, it's something that the fans are always going to be asking for um, and always wanting to see. I mean, the Shield was probably one of the most overacts in the company uh, between, let's say, WrestleMania 29 all the way until the breakup. Uh, and then people were still wondering when they were going to be returning even though they just broke up and, and were hoping that after a year, Rollins would turn babyface again and the, and the team would come together or they would all just sort of turn heel and be a heel group in the company again. So um, I know we're not com covering Rollins a lot and we've talked a lot about Brock going to UFC. I think that Rollins is going to get the win here. I'm hoping that they're not going to shotgun right into Rollins versus Reigns. Um, hopefully Reigns can sort of be that, you know, Hulk Hogan to the Ultimate Warrior after WrestleMania 6, where Warrior was the champion and, and, and Rollins could be wrestling for the Universal Championship. But as long as Roman's on the card, he's always going to be considered sort, sort of the main event. And they can sort of plug him in to building him up to a championship run. But then again, Roman, you know, multiple time champion, definitely the main main event guy of WWE. If, if, if he wanted to be in that main event tomorrow, they can make it sense. They can make it make sense on Monday Night Raw. So we'll see what happens. Dean Ambrose is definitely the ultimate uh, question mark um, of this, and uh, I think that honestly, if Ambrose is is able to be there, Rollins would love to have him uh, have his back or be in that corner because um, he's going to need help to take down the big man, Brock Lesnar. SmackDown main event time. WWE Champion, the new Daniel Bryan going up against Kofi Kingston. This match is honestly a miracle in the making. Um, Kofi Kingston, of course, filled in for Mustafa Ali at the Elimination Chamber. Uh, from there, they built up Kofi as the ultimate underdog for him to uh, take Daniel Bryan to the finish. A lot of people thought that uh, Kofi really had a chance. And I can honestly tell you that I was watching that Elimination Chamber match. And I thought there was no way in the world Kofi was going to win. And that slowly, with every move, sort of was like, are they really going to do this? 
they're doing this, this is going to happen. They're going to make Kofi Kingston win the Elimination Chamber, winning the WWE Championship. Um, he did. He was not able to do it. A lot of people thought that they were going to jump right in uh, to Kofi versus Brian. Uh, instead, uh, they made Kofi do a lot of work. They, they, they made Kofi uh, work a lot of matches, and it ended up being the New Day uh, winning a tag team gauntlet match on SmackDown uh, for Kofi to be able to get his shot. A lot of people thinking that this is leading to Kofi winning the championship at WrestleMania. I think that as of right now, if Kofi lost this match, this would be a huge slap in the face to not only Kofi Kingston, but anybody in wrestling that considers themselves a Kofi Kingston fan. Um, Kofi Kingston never really been that main event guy, thanks to Randy Orton. But um, it seems like there's no time better than right now. I mean, uh, when New Day was put together, if you can remember back to their Money in the Bank pay-per-view, uh, Xavier Woods and Biggie Langston wrestled for the uh, uh, SmackDown tag team title. No, they would have been the Raw tag team titles. Uh, and uh, Kofi Kingston was involved in the Money in the Bank ladder match. That was only the real, the only really the only real pay per view that they split them up in two different directions, wrestling in two different matches. Um, they always sort of kept them together as the three man tag team, where you didn't really know who was going to be getting in the ring, who to prepare prepare for, which is a lot like the uh, Freebird rules of the eighties. Um, I really thought that they should have been doing something like this a long time ago. Not that the Kofi should, should have been in the main event. But uh, there's no time better than, than right now. Um, Daniel Bryan has had a good run with the belt. It, it used to say that, you know, Kofi can win at WrestleMania and lose. Oh, shoot. What is the next pay-per-view? I was going to say Extreme Rules, but they mixed those uh, pay-per-views up years ago. Um, so I'm really not quite sure what um, the next pay-per-view is going to be. But, you know, it could just be a one-month run. It could be two months. Um, and Brian could be right back in the picture, but or they could do the superstar shakeup, and Daniel Bryan could be pair, be, be uh, wrestling on Monday Night Raw right after WrestleMania. So who's to say, you know, really what could happen? Um, you know, but uh, if I had a dollar, I'd bet it on Kofi Kingston to get the win here. Uh, I, I, for one, have, have said for a long time I've been I've been tired of the New Day, and I wanted them to go in a new direction. Kofi Kingston, my God, I honestly really like Big E. I really hope that the WWE Championship isn't what leads to a split in the New Day, um, even if it leads to Xavier Woods and Biggie Langston turning heel and going in their own direction. Um, uh, you know, I, I would hope that they, these three guys would just sort of look at each other and say that it's time uh, to try something new. Um, you know, Xavier Woods can be one hell of a singles wrestler if, if he got a chance to do that, honestly, in my opinion. So I'm not just trying to hold anybody down to tag teams or anything like that, but I, I really root for, for Big E. I'm hoping that something can happen for him. He's been my guy that, you know, every January I say, this is the guy to watch. He, he's probably going to be the guy to take off and um, be sitting next year uh, higher than he is now, and it hasn't happened. So I'm rooting for it. Let's get Kofi here. It's going to be a feel-good moment. I don't see this happening anywhere near the end of the show. And I honestly kind of wouldn't be surprised that this is the actual, not pre-show, but WrestleMania opener after the start of the pay-per-view. So we'll see what goes down with this one. It'll definitely get everybody moving in the right direction, get everybody swaying and partying. Kofi Mania, baby. Let's get this done. Hey, what is up, everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today. We're talking about WWE's WrestleMania 35. This will be the uh, third day of videos um, to talk about all of the matches at WrestleMania 35, unless they are just past the point of useless. Um, this is the last video, which is going to be about the main event. Um, of course, this is going to be Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey putting their championships on the line against Becky Lynch in the winner-take-all First ever woman's main event of WrestleMania that's going to be taking place at MetLife Stadium um, in New Jersey at WrestleMania 35. This is going to be one that honestly is going to be remembered for a long time and not just because of the fact that it is a woman's match headlining WrestleMania. I think this really does have a sort of instant classic written all over it. Um, last year, uh, of course, when Charlotte upset Asuka, um, the uh, direct rumors went right to Ronda Rousey main eventing WrestleMania 35. 
one of the reasons why Asuka would lose that winning streak at WrestleMania 34 um, was so Charlotte um, could stay hot. I, I'm not sure if Charlotte is undefeated at WrestleMania or not. I, I think that she was in like a SmackDown women's match the year before, and I don't think she won. But then again, they might just bring up the fact that she didn't lose because I think it was like a six-pack challenge or something like that. But um, a lot of people drew the lines of um, Charlotte versus Ronda Rousey. That's exactly the match that I thought that we were going to get. Uh, but instead, Becky Lynch, who was involved in the pre-show, I believe I picked her uh, to win the Fabulous Moolah Battle Royal. Um, but uh, she ended up not winning it. And instead it went to Naomi. But uh, Becky Lynch, in all sense of the words, clawed her way to becoming one of the most over superstars, men or women, in the entire company. Um, of course, this week we had the story come out that uh, at one point, WWE didn't really know what to do with Becky Lynch when she was in, in NXT. And before she started to have her rise uh, on TV and the roster, she almost was released. I, I know that you can say this with a lot of uh, wrestlers. I know that at one point uh, there was make or break for John Cena, um, where the company basically was ready to sever ties with him and... You know, within the matter of no time, the guy was main eventing SmackDown, uh, going on winning a, um, the, the, the championship at WrestleMania 21, and then jumping over and becoming the face of the company on Monday Night Raw. Um, so, you know, who's to say what a couple of months would have been? Um, but, uh, you know, John Cena, maybe if he never did that Vanilla Ice thing, um, you know, who knows what would have been. Becky Lynch, I don't really know what... It was, because honestly, I thought that she was getting really hot around the time of uh, Survivor Series, when they were heating her up for the match against Ronda Rousey, uh, because of course they were doing the Raw Champion versus the SmackDown Champion, and I really was surprised how over she was when SmackDown invaded Monday Night Raw, which of course led to her getting punched by Nia Jax, which you know, of course broke her nose, and... I thought right there when her face exploded that it was done for her because the the, the rumors was that uh, Becky would get her shot against Ronda Rousey at the Royal Rumble in Phoenix. And I was like, that's two months from now and there's no way in the world that she's still going to be that hot that people are going to care to see Ronda Rousey um, against uh, Becky Lynch then, it's especially after getting punched in the nose. By Nia Jax, people are going to want to see Nia versus Becky first. Um, so we'll have to see, you know, what, you know, the, the, they're able to do to, to get her there. But, you know, she, she ended up having a match at the Rumble, not against Ronda, but against Asuka. She lost that match. Well, before that, she even had a chance to win the SmackDown Championship in a TLC match. And she lost that match, too. So to get her to that point of being, you know, so over, she, she was losing matches, which is really surprising, but then she snuck in uh, Lana's injury, she snuck into the Royal Rumble and, and was able to actually be the one who win it. So I, I, as far as I can think, she's the first winner of the Royal Rumble that wasn't even announced to be a part of it. And, uh, you know, it, it, that's, that's really, really surprising. Last night's edition of WWE's Monday Night Raw, to me was, way over the top it was it was a really really fun time to see them take on uh the riot squad and then basically everything just break apart and fall into pieces as they're getting arrested and as they're brought backstage where normally the confrontation ends um you know even with everybody in handcuffs everything just went into you know the shit's creek uh, with Becky and Rhonda fighting in the back of a cop car to the point where um, they broke out a window, which led to them taking Becky Lynch out of the car, which led to Charlotte and Becky fighting, with Rhonda trying to get out of the cop car through the window so she can get involved in the fight. Charlotte, can, you know, leapt on over and need her in the head. Um, I'll be thinking about Rhonda Rousey's head bouncing off the side of that car and. Um, I can I can tell you honestly I haven't sat down at my computer and looked at any you know wrestling sheets today, but I have my fingers crossed 
hoping that Ron Rousey didn't come down with some sort of concussion, um, which is going to keep her. That was the first thought I had, was just seeing her head bump off of the side of that car. It was, you know, that had to hurt. And, you know, with her hands handcuffed behind her back, you know that uh, she doesn't, she wasn't really able to, you know, guide her head in any way to sort of the support it, to, to, to take that hit any better um, than it did. So, um, you need to think about everything that's being said about, uh, you know, what's going to happen after WrestleMania. A lot of people think that Rousey's going to be taking a break. She's been hitting it pretty hard in the last year with the WWE roster. Um, I, 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 I honestly don't know if she does house shows or doesn't do house shows, but uh, she's been pretty active on Monday Night Raw. Um, so you, you, you got to know that, you know, she's probably working a lot more than, um, a, a lot of other, of, I don't want to call them like, you know, those, you know, celebrity drop-in stars, because that was one of the things she said that she wanted when she joined the roster. She wanted to be paid just like everybody else. Um, she didn't want any special travel. She didn't want anything better in her deal than any other wrestler that was on the roster because she didn't want to alienate herself uh, from the other wrestlers that were in there because she wanted to be able to fall back on them for help because she was coming into a sport that, you know, she was a fan of and she's loved her whole life. But, you know, she, she, she you know, she doesn't have a background in this like she does in UFC. And, and, you know, everybody knows the stories of people coming into a new locker room in WWE, you know, and thinking that they're, they're a bigger star than they are and, you know, alienating themselves and really not getting any help in their matches um, from the guys or, well, from the wrestlers uh, that are on the roster. So um, I guess all fingers point to her dropping the championships. It would be surprising to me if Becky Lynch, and I'm a Charlotte girl. Oh, I guess I'm a Charlotte guy. My bad. Oh, geez. Nobody's going to watch this anyways. But, um, you know, I, I've always been a fan of Charlotte. I've always supported her and thought that she was great. But there's no doubt, you know, saying how over Ronda Rousey is, um, as well as Becky Lynch. But I, I think that Becky is going to be the one who's going to be getting the victory here. And with the uh, 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 winner-take-all, I guess you can say stipulation that Stephanie McMahon added, um, I, I don't really know what that brings. A lot of people are saying that basically they're going to put the championships together. Uh, maybe they're going to, you know, maybe strip her of one of the titles or maybe even have her lose one of the championships. Um, but a, a lot of this draws to what they're going to be doing as they come up close on the TV deal, um, which of course I think is in October when SmackDown goes to Fox. Um, I think it would be really smart of them to keep the brand split, but a lot of people are thinking that um, they're going to be keeping Monday Night Raw and SmackDown on the same roster. To me, that means that they honestly have twice as many wrestlers that they really need, or they're just going to continue to go back to the old way of house shows where they had an A show and they had B show, um, and they'll, they'll be able to keep those ones. But that means you're going to house shows and you're seeing wrestlers that you know work for WWE because you've seen them at times, um, but they're not going to be guys that are appearing on television. Um, so they're not going to be really over, I guess you can say. But uh, I'm picking Becky to get the win. I think this is going to be a great WrestleMania, guys. I just think that there's a lot of matches that don't really have a lot of steam building up to them. And to be sitting in front of your TV watching WrestleMania 35 like I am, uh, which is basically like a 13-hour show involving the pre-show, I think it's honestly going to be seven. Um, seven plus, I guess you can say. Not quite eight, but I think that's in the area it's going to be. Um, I just am hoping that I, I can pick and choose a good match or maybe even two matches. I can take a nap during just sort of separate myself from thinking that I'm working a second job that day. Peace out, everybody. It's going to be a good one. WrestleMania 35.